Hello, Aaron here today and today I've been joined by George um, in our team and George is going to be talking about cyber threats. Now there isn't a, a day or even a week that goes by where we don't see on the news some cyber security issue, large, some large organizations being hacked, um, data being um, taken, ransoms being um, occurring, um, all because of data. So now imagine if these large organizations, whether it's the NHS or a large company, can get hacked and have um, ransom um, security where issues arising in their businesses. Just imagine the small business, if that happens to you, happens to your business. Now what we're seeing are increasingly more criminal activities in this space. So what we're doing now is we're actually realizing that um, the biggest issue that actually can arise is helping and understanding for you for you to understand your data security issues and then managing that internally and within your within your small business medium sized business or large business okay so today we're going to go through some of the cyber threats to your business and common attack methods that you might see and George is going to go through this and then potentially how we can help and how you can secure your data much much better in this changing um, and increasingly um, scary environment hi George how are you doing Hi, very good. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks for that nice introduction. But yeah, so just to crack crack on really, and just to give you a quick brief understanding of who I am, I'm George Bami. I'm the cybersecurity analyst at Samara. So we we do a lot of things cybersecurity wise, and I'll cover that in, in this webinar. But to start, um, we're going to talk about um, cyber threats to businesses and most common attacks and really how you can prevent them. So we're going to be covering a couple of things. So firstly, what is a current what is the current cyber attack status? Um, why common attacks actually work how you can minimize attacks then i'm going to talk about how we can help you and we how we can help you stay secure and just some things you can take away with you to you know give you some some learning and everything so to start what's the current cyber attack status well currently we've got that businesses are targeted obviously you know it's as aaron said data is the most lucrative business really going in the world right now you know you have all your data, you know, um, all your client information, everything is all stored somewhere. It is data which can be stolen and can be sold. Now, 64% of organizations attacked are large firms. Now, we're not really focusing on large or medium firms. It's the micro firms, it's the small firms we want to focus on because they're the ones that don't really have any sort of prevention scheme. They don't really have training because they're small firms. They don't really, they don't think, why do I need this? Why do I need this? Because I'm a small business. Now, you know, the large and medium firms, they're the ones that have all of the, the training. They have the, the highest end security software going. It's difficult for these hackers to get into. But with saying that, the risk outweighs you know, the, 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 the amount they can get back from these large firms potentially is a lot more than the small firms and the micro firms. Um, and obviously, we're again also targeting um, admin real estate. So, you know, things like, because obviously with real estate business, uh, businesses, not only have they got medical, um, not medical records, sorry, excuse me, it's not only have they got your name, your address, everything like that, but they've also got your financial records, you know, everything, your um, bank statements, everything you need to trade a house. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, you've got solicitors, um, phone numbers, everything. So again, this is why real estate um, businesses are prime targets. Can, so, I, can I can I interrupt you, George? I think as, a, as, as someone who works in finance and who works in an account, runs an accountancy firm, again, accountants are always a target. Solicitors firms are a target um, because there's so much information and data held within the, in these organizations. So um, it's so essential to protect your data. And similarly, if you're working, I know George is going to go lead on to this, but into the healthcare space, again, it's not only financial data and personal data, but it's all that medical information as well. So exactly that. Sorry I've st if I've stolen your thunder there, George. No, but, no, not, not uh, at all, um, but no, no it's exactly <laughs> that. That's medical records, you know, because yeah. um, obviously dentists especially, not only do they have financial information, you know, the cards when they pay for their um, treatments, but they have their address, their phone number, um, their name, their email address, everything. But they're not only that, but your medical records. You know, this to a hacker is, it's a goldmine. And I'm 90% sure that most dental practices don't have any sort of protection in place apart from the basic protection that comes with Microsoft computers, which quite frankly has its flaws and is very easy to bypass. So let's lead on to what kind of attacks um, a hacker can use. So obviously, all the time, you're going to get phishing phishing attacks. Now, do, do, do you want to explain what a phishing attack is for those who? Yeah, yeah, no. I, I, sure. So a, a phishing attack is obviously it's an email. 
you know, more nine times out of ten, it's an email that comes through. Now, the email might look something like this. Okay, so what we have here is we have a simple email it's from Office 365, and you think, okay, this is interesting. So it's saying that the Office 365 has detected a spam email, and you need to verify your account, or it'll be forced to be closed down. Now you thinking that this is an actual threat you think okay i'm going to click on verify now just to ensure that my account stays active but what you've just done is you've just clicked on the link and that has downloaded a malicious file now there are a couple of ways you can view to make sure that a phishing email is a phishing email and not a real one first things first is to check the email so what you want to do is you want to check where the email has come from now you can see here this is from a random email and it's at lowest.net that is not from microsoft that is the key way you can tell where it's come from and now further down you can also see there are spelling errors verify so you verify and then it's got a space after the, before the comma i'll be after the comma sorry now again the, the way that these phishing emails work is they don't pry on the average person the intelligent person who can instantly see this as a phishing attack they prey on the ones that just assume. It's like um, cowboy builders from the Wilson the TV show who mostly prey on the elderly because they are weaker. So again, they will do sp simple spelling mistakes because that just um, streamlines and it gets rid of the people who know it's going to be a scam. Um, so I'm going to lead on to the second type of um, uh, uh, attack and it's impersonating in emails. Now emails are quite easy to spoof which and um, by spoofing i mean they can pretend that they come from the actual person now i'm going to cover shortly what um kind of attacks there of what main attacks there are but for now it's we're just going through the, the different different type of attacks and i'll explain to them further further along so this isn't it, when you spoof someone it's things like um like we've had it at some error actually aaron where um, one of the accounters actually said to me, is this email real? And it was actually imitating Aaron. And it's basically saying, oh, we've got a new client. Can you please send me the uh, an Amazon gift voucher and I'll, um, I'll reimburse you. Now, it seemed very real. But again, if you looked at the email, um, like here, it wasn't from Aaron. It was from a random email address pretending to be Aaron. So then we go down to viruses, spyware and malware. Now, these are things are they, they are very common you know it's you go onto you know dodgy websites and it automatically puts loads of pop-ups you click on the pop-up by accident that then downloads a script which then infects your computer now nine times out of ten you have a antivirus on your machine which prevents that from even being downloaded which is great but then a lot of the times these antiviruses aren't 100 percent effective there are some malware that are brand new that the antivirus has not discovered before and doesn't realize it's malicious so you know viruses and they're not fun we I'm, I'm i've had my fair share of viruses in the past before i was up to knowledge on how everything works and yeah it, it, they're not fun uh and then we've got denial of service attacks and so a denial of service attack is what it try and what it does it's is it shuts down the computer it shuts down your access to the computer this is more prevalent in um companies where you've got servers where you've got uh, remote desktops so you know again in samara we previously used uh, before we switched to Office 365, everything, we previously used servers. We had a servers in a data center, which we can remote in, have all of our information, everything like that. Now, what actually these hackers do is they shut down those computers and they shut them down so you as a user don't have access to them, but they do. And they have access to all your files. They can do whatever you want and you can't do anything. You know, you're you're there, hands up in the air, you can't do anything. And now we can then go down to hacking or attempted hacking of online bank accounts. Uh, again, that doesn't really need explaining, really. Um, hacking a bank account, obviously you can steal funds and, and all that. But nowadays, thankfully, you've got your um, two-factor authentication. And by that, I mean, obviously, you put in your account number, your special passphrase, which only you should know, you should never share with anyone else. Then sometimes it also asks you to use the little chip and pin reader to give the special number that gets generated. Um, again, take then go down to take over all organizations' users' accounts. Again, same kind of thing. You can then remote into files and you can access the servers and the uh, storage servers and steal data that way and now ransomware this is one of the biggest threats and what ransomware is is it's 
as it sounds, it's ransom. So what they do is you will go onto a onto a dodgy website, or you'll click on a phishing link, and it will download a file that then starts to encrypt everything. And by encrypt, I mean it will then block it, so you can't even open it. It will be locked with a really secure hash, which is like a it's it's like a password more or less, but it's hundreds of characters long. They are incredibly difficult to hack. They're not impossible. But it would take a supercomputer years to figure it out. <laughs> so, you know, pretty much impossible. Now what a ransomware does, it will say, pay $300 and we'll unblock all your files. Now, a lot of the times, if it's your personal computer, you're thinking, oh, family photos, all that. Maybe the $300 is worth it, maybe it's not. But with a business, you know, you've got all this client information, you've got the document you've worked on for months, for them it to be locked away and you can't use it so you will have to spend the 300 dollars to get unlocked there is no other way around it unless you can find the key it used to create the hash no way in hell you can get it unblocked and they are everywhere that is the so ransomware is the same kind of thing that in the 2017 nhs attack they had that was the ransomware it was called wanna crime um was the which was infected on most nhs computers it actually had to shut down three hospitals in the uk so it's very scary ransomware but again cyber um antiviruses anti-malware they can detect them quite quickly and they can stop them and again unauthorized access of files or networks but outsiders that's more like things like um, let's say you've got a guest wi-fi now you want to make sure your guest Wi-Fi is isolated from your home of your of your actual network, so they can't access files on the computers. Um, and same thing, accessing files by 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 staff. Now again, staff is actually one of your key one one of your most vulnerable vulnerabilities in the business is your staff. A lot of the time, they don't realise what's going on. Now this is obviously is saying uh, uh, accessing files by staff, and that's things like um let's say the executives they want to have all the the client information the financial information whilst the beginner you know data entry staff don't have access to that so there's things like that um and i'm listening listening to video conferences so again these aren't massive threats but i mean given the right circumstances they potentially could be they could say a past the, the past phrase of the bank account for example and everything like that i know there are other breaches and attacks but We'll, um, there's, there's so many attacks out there that I think will will be over time just explaining those. <laughs> so, but George, George, so if we looked at these, and like, so like if you look at a phishing attack or the other impersonating ones, they're obviously the vast majority. But what quite happens is, is they might send a phishing email, and you click on that la- link, and that actually is a link to some ransomware. Is that correct? Is that how correct? Yeah. So a lot yeah. of the time, um, so a phishing email, it it could be multiple different things. What it can be is it can be a data logger. You know, it, it's there's a phishing attack is a very broad term. It's a, a phishing attack is purely the sending of a fake email for you to click on something. Now, whether whether that link takes you, as I said, to a data logger, it makes sure your account's active because you know I'm sure we've all got emails that we don't use anymore, and emails that get sent to those, and if no one clicks on nothing. Okay, the um, email isn't active. But if you click on them, email is active. So what they do is they'll keep sending you spam, and that is, again, it's it's spam emails. I mean, I mean, I I've had my own website before, and I still to this day, even the website doesn't exist anymore, I still get emails saying, "Do I want web developing services?" Again, this is spam emails which no one wants, and that again, a data logger will see, okay, account's active, keep sending us account spam. But then there are other ones, as Aaron said, that is malicious. You know, you click on the link, it'll then automatically download a file, and. That file could be a, a virus, could be spyware, and a, a spyware is, again, is as it sounds. It it's a little, little program that sits in the background, that then just views. All it does is watches, and with that, you can just say you're logging into your online banking on your computer. That hacker's watching you do it. It's seeing, okay, wow, he's got a lot of money as an account. Let's pursue him, and you don't know it's there. And um, and malware, that's things. It slows down your computer. It it tries to steal information, things like that. And then ransomware, as I've previously mentioned, just locks up your computer. It locks up all your files, can't do anything with them. So let's move on to the frequency of cyber attacks. So how often do you think cyber attacks happen? And believe it or not, they happen quite regularly. So if we look here at businesses, yeah, so we're looking here at businesses. Now, we have 19%, it only happens once. And 29% happens, it happens about once a month. Now, or less than once a month, sorry. 
Now, what happens here is when a hacker targets a business, if they have a breach, so if, for example, they have been successful in someone clicking that phishing link, for example, they then know that business is vulnerable. So what they'll do is they'll just keep attacking. They'll keep attacking until they get in. And that's that's the scary part. So you don't want to just click on one link and think it's okay, you know. What happens is once you click on one, they'll continue sending them. And that's the same how the same reason I said um previously about the um the data loggers, you know, they'll just keep spending your spam. It's the exact same thing. If you click on the link, they will send you more and more and more because they know you're vulnerable. And now also it could be the fact that you're vulnerable because you have such classified information, for example, like financial records. You do not do not want these to be out in the public domain. You the 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 dark web is nothing it, it's it's something to be scared of. You know, there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of hackers in these forums online which you cannot access through Google. You use a, use a, a program called Tor, which allows you to access these um, these websites which have no security preferences on them, nothing. You can, it's it's it, they are dangerous, and it's little forums like this that they share information for money, really. So let's move on to cyber attack goals and why they work. So obviously, I've I've previously mentioned about different attacks, but the most common goals is credential harvesting. So that's things like your email, your password for your online banking, for your um, different um, uh, businesses, things you can log into. They, you know, and again, it's with passwords. It's you will most likely have the same password for everything, and again, it will most likely be a family member followed by a date. I'm I've been at fault of that in the past, but there are different ways you can protect yourself from that, and we'll we'll cover that later on in the webinar. So the next one is business email compromise or a BEC. Now, this doesn't sound too bad. And you think business email compromise? Well, okay, what does that mean? What happens if they get my if they get my email? Now, what you need to remember is there are some executives out there that actually transfer funds. They wire funds through emails, and if you can compromise those emails, now what what makes you say the hacker doesn't just send himself money from this this business email? That's the scary part, which is why you want a decent password with your uh, for your accounts. And the next ransomware, I've already covered ransomware. So again, it locks up your computer, it take it locks your files up, and it stops you from actually accessing your files. Now, what if you've got hundreds of family photos and videos that you don't have anywhere else? You know, it's it, that's what they prey on. And malware infection again, that could be things stealing information. It could be, um, let's say, you've got a text file on your desktop of all of your client phone numbers and addresses. Oh, thank you, says Mr. Hacker. I'll take that and I'll sell that. You know, and I get it. By, by selling, I mean, okay, we sell it and then they start spending, sending you spam emails. They start sending them phishing emails because they have their name and their phone number and potentially their email. And then denial of service or a DOS or a distributed denial of service, which is a DDoS. Now, a DOS is it shuts down a network. It, as I said, it stops you from accessing a server so they can steal information and go away with it. But a DDoS is the same kind of thing, but what it does is it spoofs and, it's, and it fakes traffic to overwhelm servers. So have you been on a website where, uh, for example, recently um, Boris Johnson released um, the new booster vaccine program? Now, if you went onto the website, immediately after he said that, you would have seen, you would have been able to access it. And the reason is because there's such an influx, there's such an overwhelming amount of traffic on the website that the network just cannot handle it. Now, don't forget, when you access a website, you're actually just accessing a, a, a computer in a data center. That's all you're doing. You know, everything you see on the web, it's being hosted on a computer. So when you have so much traffic trying to visit this one website, this one computer, the, the system bottles up, it can't handle it. So that's why a DDoS is not great because it fakes the traffic to stop accessing that website. Now, they they work in different ways. You know, it's they um it's it's the human interaction. For example, you know, it's email phishing, and this is the thing. It, it seems real. Um, <clears throat> they kind of the, the way these phishing emails work is they they hope on the human factor. You know, they hope on the, oh, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt kind of thing. And, you know, that's it's it's that's not 
not great, really. So again, with email phishing, you you believe it's real. You, you think, why would someone be sending me a fake email? You assume because it says from Office three six five, you assume it is is real. And again, we've got system vulnerabilities, comp- pure, poor configuration and maintenance. And by poor configuration, I mean you don't regularly update your computer. Now, you think, oh, these updates, they're that they, they throw things off. A lot of the, and that's not the case. A lot of the time, these updates are security updates. And what that means is that they Microsoft have realized there's a vulnerability and they send out an update to patch it. And by patching, I mean, again, it's think of a hole and they just go... They just slap a patch on top that it stops that vulnerability from being exploited by hackers. Um, then we move on to targeted attacks. And that's where you, things are a bit wary. And by that, I mean it's hackers know that you have files they want to steal and they physically attack you. They, they or not Sarah, physically, they, they want to attack you specifically to steal your data. Because a lot of time when I say these phishing links, they get sent to thousands of tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands of emails at the same time and this then they they, they then hope on a couple of people will then click on them but a targeted attack that's the scary one that's the one where they are physically scouting you out and they want to steal your data it's the way it's the same thing with a um with a uh when your house gets robbed yeah they most of the time they will be watching you watching how you work they go okay cool they've left now we can go in and that's the scary thing so let me just move on to some more phishing examples. And this is what one which looks at from Microsoft Teams. So currently this webinar is being hosted in Microsoft Teams. So you can say an admin has added you to a collaboration team and you think, okay, let me just confirm that. That's absolutely fine. And I click on confirm. Again, that's a phishing email. And we can tell it's a phishing email once again because the email. That is not from Microsoft. That is not from Microsoft Teams. That is a very, very random email. And that's really what you want to do. And a lot of the time is when you do click on these links, it will take you to the Microsoft Teams webpage. You think, you don't think much of it. You don't even realize it's a phishing email because it redirects you. Once it's once it's take, downloaded that file, once it's gone to the website it wants you to go to, it will redirect you to the webpage you thought you were clicking on. And so you don't really think much of it. So, how can we minimize these attacks? Well, first things first is you can use a secure password. And now, using a secure password, I mean, we'll cover this in a a little bit, but the best way you can use a secure password is by using a password manager. And that's, you know, there's different products out there where they automatically generate a password and you can use them to log in. And now, things like um, Google, if you use Google Chrome, they have this already. If you go sign into a new account, you'll see it suge- It says suggested password. And it will be a random string of characters, of small case, lower case, um, symbols, numbers, everything you can think of in this password. It'll be so, so secure. The next, infrastructure configuration. And again, that's more or less the sense of making sure your patches are sorted. Things like your guest network, because dinner practices, for example. I'm sure a lot of you... Um, provide a guest wi-fi that you can that the patients connect to whilst they're waiting for their appointment now what would happen if your guest wi-fi was on the same network as your computers what do you think will happen because i'll tell you what will happen is you that person on the guest wi-fi can access all those files and they're thinking oh what's that is you know a couple of files don't forget you have all your patient information stored on those computers. So what if this person sat in the waiting room is a hacker? You'll never know. You'll never know. And he has stolen hundreds, if not thousands, of client information. And not just client information, medical history. Not good. So what you want to do is you want to ensure that your guest Wi-Fi is isolated from your network. And it's using something called a VLAN or a virtual... um, um, virtual local area network and then the next one knowledge again it's I, I've mentioned of how to spot a phishing email what if you've never watched this e- what if what if you never want to see this webinar what if you've never even realized what a phishing email was and you just clicked on the verify now link and this is the danger so knowledge is in it's good to ensure what a phishing email is 
how you can prevent them and how you can move forward and know that you are safer in your business. And then secondly, or finally, sorry, is a good antivirus. So we personally use ESET, which is a, um, a business grade uh, antivirus, anti-malware, anti pretty much everything really. Um, and it is a very, very, very powerful software. And so what an antivirus does is it constantly evolves. It constantly scans, it knows, it looks into the source code of that program, of that file you're downloading, and it will then match it to everything that, um, uh, to, to the database it has. And if it's straight, if it flags that it's seen it before, it'll then tell you and you won't open the, open the file. So let's talk about passwords. Now, what are passwords for? Obviously, they are used to access your systems, the remote access to your office and cloud hosted systems. And by cloud hosted system, systems, I mean things like Office 365. You know, and you use passwords for near enough everything. So you need to ensure they are secure. Now, you know, you you passwords originally, um, you know, we're talking 20 odd years ago, would have been just a single eight character long word. Now, if you have a lowercase and uppercase letter in it, how long do you think it'll take to crack? We're using a decent computer who is using a decent program to um to crack a password crack, things like John the Ripper, that's a program you can use to crack passwords. Um, how long do you think it takes? I'll tell you, it takes 20 seconds to get into that password. Now, if that pass... Is that, that, is that using a piece of software, as you're saying? That uh, yeah, cracking? so yeah, there's there's lots of different softwares you can use, but there's one called John the Ripper, which you feed it a... Um, uh, you can feed it something called a, a word list, and that you can download them. You can go onto a website, like I said, like uh, right here, called haveibeenpwned.com, and you can put in your email, you can put in either your password, and it will say either it's seen it before in a database or it hasn't. And this is the scary thing. You know, I have old emails which I've given up because they have been compromised at some point and it's seen it before. It has, it's seen it on the dark web in a database, which means my password, my email is out there in the world, which is petrifying. So I actually use a password manager, just, you know, like here. I use a password manager, which, um, it has an app on my phone. I can do everything like that. It runs off inside my browser, which automatically feeds in my passwords. I don't have to really remember them because the issue with complex passwords is remembering them. So let me just move back on to, you know, different how long it takes to crack these passwords. So, sorry, sorry, George. Sorry, George. Just quick. Thing. Is it have I been pawned? Is there an A missing in that? Uh, no, that is that is the actual correct spelling. It's have I been pwned, it's called. So P W N E D, yeah. P W A N N E D, yeah. So okay. that is the actual website. It's um, it's like a, it's a play on words really. So have I been pwned .com, What you'll do is you can put your email in, and there's another tab you can put your password in, and again it will it will tell you if it's seen it in a breach. And now what I mean by if it's seen it in a breach is, a lot of these big companies, as I said, get hacked. You know, again we've seen the NHS get hacked. We've seen MySpace has been hacked. Um, Etsy you know you name it most websites at some point have been hacked look at the facebook data breach with um oxford um something cambridge like cambridge analytica Cam cambridge analytica thank you that was it <laughs> almost yeah right. i knew it. i was in the same in the, in the right neighborhood <laughs> um you know you see that and what happened is um cambridge analytica they were selling off millions of emails passwords names you name it all you know through facebook and that's a breach and so these passwords these emails they get triggered they get put onto the dark web and they get put onto a database and now that database can be used by programs as i said like um jack uh, john the ripper sorry so if we move on to times the crack so eight characters and numbers it takes about six hours again it's it's a, a much slower way to crack but it's still not impossible and you then got the next one, 12 characters, an uppercase and a lowercase, four months. Again, this is using a very powerful computer to crack these passwords using hundreds, if not millions, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of different passwords. And it'll put them in, keep putting them in, keep putting them in, keep putting them in until it cracks it. And now we then move on to 12 characters, complex. Now what I mean by complex, I mean it's got uppercase letters, lowercase letters, um, symbols, numbers, Everything, 12 characters long. It can take up to 138,000 years, which is crazy to think. So that is a very, very, very secure password. 
So you don't want a password to include any personal information. Passwords aren't personal. They are purely there to protect you. Again, as I said previously, most times, nine times out of 10, people will have a password that has their child's name in it, for example, or with a date. Now, I've been full to that. You know, I, I have previously in the past had my daughter's name and her birthday as a password. No longer have that because I've realized how vulnerable they are. You know, I'm, I'm proud of my daughter. I am proud of her everything. So I put her on, on Facebook. I said, happy birthday to my daughter. And I say her name and I say the date. And I don't say the date. I say happy birthday. And I put it on that specific date. Now, if I didn't have security settings on my Facebook profile, what could happen is someone can see, okay, the daughter's name is Chloe, for example, and the date was on the 4th of March, 2018. Or sorry, the, the, the date was on the 4th of March, 2019, for example. Happy first birthday, um, Chloe. Now, what, I, what if I was a hacker, I could see, okay, the, the child's called Chloe, so I'm going to try the password as Chloe, and what did I say? It was the 4th of March, did I say? Yep, O four, O four, no, O three, O three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not intelligent, you see. Twenty eighteen, and now most of the time, that will be your password. It is petrified to think how easy it is to crack someone's password just by using Facebook. So again, this is why I, why personally recommend using a password manager. Um, and you can use the one built into Google. It's it's great. So. Let's move on to infrastructure configuration. Now, again, I've said that software patching, but it's also using things like user account permissions. Now, if you aren't an, if you don't need admin permissions on a network, don't give them admin permissions on a network. Simple as that. Because the fewer people, the people that have admin permissions is the fewer people that have access to change things. You know, so if you want to have someone who is just using the computer for word processing emails, keep them as a standard user. They don't need to be changing settings. Because if that account gets compromised, they can change everything, which is it, it's not good. Then we have an anti-malware system, anti-malware software, sorry. So that, again, that's kind of self-explanatory. You want an anti-software, anti-malware, anti-virus software, which will prevent a file from being downloaded automatically without even your input. Um, again, these anti these antiviruses they evolve. They constantly evolve and they constantly learn. Next, we have backups. So, in the unlikely event or in the scary event that your account does get compromised, i.e., from that ransomware attack, you can wipe your computer, delete that um, that antivirus completely, get rid of it, or that sorry the um, ransomware, and you can reinstate everything because you have a you have a ready back you have a backup ready to go. And the next thing you can use is cloud hosted environments. All of our, so for example, at Samara, all of our data is being used on Office 365. We no longer have any local storage, mainly for the fear of losing everything. So we actually moved from servers when we had, do you remember that fire um, that happened in beginning of 2021? That fire that happened at a data center. Unfortunately for us, that fire affected our servers we had remote desktop servers that actually happened to affect it thank the lord though we had backups it took a couple of days to get those backups through but we had backups so ever since then we've given up on the route of um remote desktops and remote servers and we've gone all complete office 365 and i don't think we've actually ever looked back have we aaron <laughs> not at all i think it's it's quicker simpler and cheaper actually as well so yeah and and as he said everything's backed up all the time it's a constant backup there exactly and it's it's not just that. It's, it's easier to share files with clients you don't have to keep emailing them they can we can update them they can automatically see it things like that it's just a lot easier and now the next thing is routers and firewalls now a router it's it serves two different purposes it obviously it gives yourself a static ip address on your network I'm not going to bore you with the technical jargon, but it also has a firewall. Now, a firewall, it's, as it says, think of it as a brick wall. You know, you're a person trying to get into a building. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to plop a big brick wall in front of you. They can't get through it. But a 
router normally has a very basic password email. It's probably admin admin as the username and password or admin password, things like that. Um, these are the default passwords. So again, if someone was to be on their guest Wi-Fi, they can go to nine times out of 10, the IP address for a router is 192.168.1.0.1, sorry. Um, and you can use the login password of admin admin and you can change all the settings on the firewall to allow yourself to be in remotely to be externally so these aren't great so move on to cyber essentials now cyber essentials is a um is a part of it's a government program which requires organizations to enact basic technical controls across five areas so what that means is it um it kind of forces businesses to ensure their firewalls and their, their internet gateways are up to date and are secure. They don't allow, they don't, there's, no, there's no gaps in it, there's no holes. So again, a firewall, what I mean by that is, as, as I say, is a brick wall. Now, a couple, sometimes you need to access uh, all the, um, the outside world, the outside um, uh, internet needs to access your home network, your network. So what you'll do is you'll remove one brick from that wall. That is a small little hole you, um, that traffic can go through. Now, what you don't want is you don't want hundreds of these holes to be open because each hole that is open, each port it's called, that is open is another way a hacker can get into your network. So you want secure configurations and what I mean by that is again, it's making sure that password has been changed, it's ensuring that your um, your guest Wi-Fi is isolated from your home, your network. I'm going to keep saying home network and I do apologize, but that is because I, I keep saying that often at home. But, um, but I mean, like your your network at um, at work, at your at your office, your building of work, and your user access controls. And I mean that more like um, a lot of big businesses have things like um, RFID tags that you can tag on the wall to lay yourself in, um, things like that. So you want to make sure that's isolated from your networks. So they they can't create these um, these keys to unlock the doors. Uh, malware protection again i've talked about that so that's um your antivirus software that's your software that's implemented to prevent these attacks and patch management again that is making sure you follow with every software update that microsoft gives you so these are cyber essentials these are things that the government um agency called ncsc which is the national cyber security center they want you to have in place to ensure you're safe in your business so if we were to continue forward so training this is how we could help you so we offer a bespoke cyber security awareness training and that's what i mean by that well it's a way that you can do online cloud-based courses that tell you everything you need to know and teach you everything you need to prevent yourself from cyber security attacks and then we focus mainly on phishing attacks because as i said at the beginning it's 90 percent of the of the time an attack happens it's through a phishing attack and they could be very very dangerous so what we actually do is we do something called simulated phishing attacks and what do i mean by that well i mean we will send you those fake emails we'll send you these fake emails and don't worry they're not malicious in the slightest if you click on the link by accident or you don't realize it's a phishing email and you click on it it'll take you to a landing page saying oh you failed the test and then what we'll do is it then resend you a quick 15 minute refresher course so this is what we kind of do I mean, we could give you we can give the business owner weekly reports to see how their staff are doing you, you can see specific staff so if there's a specific person who is quite frankly a weak person in your business you can have a chat with them and say hey look you need to start learning and you need to start preventing these attacks and our platform is constantly evolving and what do i mean by that well i mean every time a new phishing email arises it, we get notified of it we can then see it and we are constantly evolving on content we currently have seventeen thousand different um phishing emails we can use um as for simulate for simulate for simulating yeah you know we, we have so much we can do and it's such a powerful um software like you, you oops, excuse me you used it aaron haven't you it, it's it's yeah, such yeah. a powerful thought, content yeah let me let me add to it. i think it goes back to what you said earlier though it's it's that frequency that um issue if if if, if you click on one phishing email then they're going to start barraging barraging you with further and further phishing emails not just to you but other me team members on the same domain exactly you. so then they've seen that's a weakness so and they'll give other ideas and i suppose 
what we're trying to do with the training is provide that human firewall to 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 those people um, to, to your business because it's usually the weakest link is not a brick wall but in your business but it's the human interaction so imagine exactly that. on a busy reception desk in a practice or a dental practice or other office or something they're busy answering phone calls doing this doing that dealing with a hundred different things at the same time so it's very easy for these things to be overlooked and just oh click the email and update my computer when in reality it's like a oh christ i've pressed a phishing link and you're exposing the business to 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 to, 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 to something not so good so um it's it's a uh, it's so so important and overwhelmingly most cyber security issues come back down to basic human um failure or human interaction or failure to interact properly yeah no yeah. exactly that so you're probably gonna be asking yourself all right okay how much does this cost i bet it's uh stupidly expensive and everything like that actually we're quite relatively affordable and now that is we charge simply eight pounds a month per user that's including VAT. And if you pay annually, you've reduced that by 20%. So, you know, it's it's an affordable way to ensure that you are safe in your business. It's, in my opinion, it's kind of a no-brainer. Um, you have your antivirus, but as Aaron said, the first line of defense is the human firewall. There is no point having a antivirus software if your staff, if your team members keep giving you vulnerabilities you know that that's the issue so this training what it does is it ensures you are fully aware of your network is fully aware of the threats that are out there and how to prevent phishing attacks how to spot them in the first place because the ones i've showed you here at the beginning they are relatively simple to to notice but sometimes these phishing emails they are very hard to notice very very, clever, very hard very to clever, notice very clever, and it's yeah. it's honestly quite scary so as i said we you know we are constantly evolving our content you know it's we've got little videos you can watch interactive games you can play it's everything you can think of it's 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 easy it's 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 kind of an it's as I said, it's a no-brainer really and so can I, if i if i could add there george i think yeah. cyber crime is 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 a growth area okay in terms mm. of for, for criminals out there it's a massive growth area it's so much easier for them to target people on their computers rather than having to break into people's houses or whatever exactly but there's and no threat that's the problem you know obviously yeah, no with, threat to them. with they burglary could be sitting and virtually in it, it, yeah be sitting virtually somewhere else in the world and have a and, and still access and done everything so they could really, be in the middle really, of you cannot the Siberia desert. How, how exposed businesses are here in the uk so uh, take take a look have a look okay i think really strongly you'd recommend you look at this awareness training for your business if you're serious about protecting your data um because it's it's when you don't have it and you have a breach or you have a problem then you think oh christ i wish i'd had done it in the first place okay? yeah no exactly that Aaron. and so finally it's just takeaways what can you take from this well as i said the greatest place you can get any information from is the national cyber security center the ncsc.gov.uk this has hundreds of different practice guides information everything you need to know about how to make sure your network is secure your business is secure now the ICAEW is an IT facility and uh, faculty, faculty. Sorry, IT faculty. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, excuse my, myself. <laughs> and again, it's, it's more of the same kind of thing as the um, NCSC, but it's a bit more specific um, to cybersecurity. And that's got again, it's got guides, technical information, everything you need to know. Cyber Essentials again, part of the NCSC. That's um, a great starting point. It's everything you need to know about how to make sure your network is secure. It's things, as I said, it's guides to follow. You know, you need to make sure your boundary firewalls, your internet gateways, secure configurations, user access controls, malware, antivirus protection, and patch management, they're all there. They're, 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 you know, it's like a, a, a tick box, tick, tick sheet, if you will, of what you need to do. And then finally, using a password manager. You know, you can, as I said, in inside Google Chrome is a password manager built in, which is great. And a lot of the times you have things like an Android phone you can use. Again, it's all automatically built in. So again, finally... I'm George Bellamy. If you have any problems, feel free to email me at cyber at samara.co.uk and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Again, if you want um, to see our um, our training program in, um, live, feel free to get email me again and I'm sure we can get that arranged. Um, Aaron, anything else from you? Yeah, I, th I think thanks, George. Really helpful and really insightful. And I've, I've just checked my email address on that have i been pawned website and it highlights i have i have been breached yeah <laughs> various ways which is quite scary um but as george said i, I think 
you cannot underestimate how vulnerable your business is and i'd really suggest you reach out to george he can help for a relatively modest cost a month um, you can probably really train your team to make sure that you're not exposed to this type of thing um, as i think this is a growing area for criminals um, so th that's the bottom line like protect your data and build that human firewall in your practice okay in your business because that's your weakest link nine times out of ten okay? yeah thank you no, exactly that and, oh, right, sorry cheers. one last thing check check it out if you want for full, further information go to our website and there's a whole section on cyber security and all the details of what George talked about um, and everything else is all there and how to sign up to to the training as well is all there as well. Okay? Yeah, spot on. Brilliant. All right, thank you so much, everyone, and I'll, um, I'll catch you later. Great. Thanks, George. Cheers. Thank you. Bye-bye.